Hello and welcome to this webinar uh, on Beyond Switches for Pump Monitoring What Changed with API Standard 682. My name is Gary Hawkins. I'm a Senior Applications Consultant with Emerson Process Management and I'm going to talk to you about uh, what has changed in the latest edition of API Standard 682, which is the, uh, the fourth edition. We'll talk briefly about what are the dual mechanical seals, uh, common problems with uh, the measurements and the benefits that transmitters can bring. Uh, we'll look at a couple of API plans. There are many. We'll look at a few uh, solutions for those, uh, the ones that have uh, significant instrumentation on them. And then uh, we'll talk about uh, going beyond uh, API and the other instrumentation that can be applied to your pumps to uh, uh, improve the reliability, and we'll close with some more information. So what is uh, API standard 682? Well, the, I guess we should first ask, well, what is the API? Uh, the API is the American Petroleum Institute. It's the largest trade association in the uh, oil and gas industry. Uh, their website is api.org. Uh, they are a lobbying organization in Washington, D.C., but they also uh, have, uh, provide a venue for industry consultants like myself to uh, meet regularly. We meet twice a year on the Committee of Refinery Equipment. And uh, we set standards uh, for equipment and instrumentation uh, in the oil uh, processing industry, uh, refining and uh, petrochemical production. Hey, Gary. The, uh, yes. Gary, I don't mean to yes. stop you, but your voice seems to keep going in and out, so the audio quality isn't going to be that good. Is there a reason? Are you using your speakerphone? No, I'm using a uh, iPhone with the... Uh, the wired uh, earpieces with the microphone. Maybe okay. the microphone is, maybe it's uh, rubbing against me or something. Yeah, because um, you, I mean, all of a sudden you'll sound great, and then all of a sudden you sound like you're in a tunnel, and then you come back. So I just figured maybe you could start over and okay. try and, okay? All right, so take it from the top. Take it from the top. Okay, at the top. Hello, welcome to this webinar, uh, Beyond Switches for Pump Monitoring, What Has Changed with API Standard 682. My name is Gary Hawkins. I'm a Senior Applications Consultant with Emerson Process Management, and I uh, thank you for uh, joining this webinar. We'll be uh, talking about uh, Standard 682. The, uh, the latest edition is the fourth edition. Uh, a little bit about what are dual mechanical seals on pumps some of the typical problems with uh, pumps and the benefits the transmitters can bring. We'll look at a couple of the API plans and talk about specific solutions for them. And uh, what other instrumentation can be added to pumps to uh, provide uh, more information on, their, uh, on the health or condition of the uh, pumps. And we'll close with uh, where you can find some more information. So what is uh, API Standard 682? Well, first we might ask, what is uh, API? API is the American Petroleum Institute. It's the largest trade or association for the oil and gas industry. It's a lobbying organization headquartered in Washington, D.C., but they also provide venues for uh, industry consultants uh, that from uh, operating companies, from vendors, and from uh, engineering contractors to meet and develop standards for all kinds of equipment that are found in the uh, the process uh, plants, and uh, these standards are generally adapted globally, and uh, specifically, if uh, you're one of our uh, uh, listeners outside the United States, uh, ISO 21049 is a rebranding of API standard 682. However, I should mention that does apply to the prior editions, the second and third editions, but the, uh, the fourth edition, um, the ISO 21049, is, is not caught up yet. It is uh, still uh, representing the third edition. So the fourth edition, if uh, you would need to acquire that from uh, API, not uh, ISO. So 682 is uh, primarily to give recommendations on the sealing systems around the shaft uh, for centrifugal and rotary pumps used in the uh, petroleum, natural gas, and chemical industries. The uh, instrumentation that we're talking about is actually dealt with in the annex uh, of the standard. So the bulk, the, the technical content of the standard uh, dictates the seal systems on the pumps. However, there are these auxiliary seal flush systems with instrumentation that uh, 
are essential to keep the uh, the pump operating. So we'll uh, go into that. So the uh, the basic change over time is that the standards have uh, evolved to uh, use uh, transmitters to recommend transmitters over uh, switches as a more reliable means of uh, getting the uh, the measurements, primarily the low and high level alarms associated with these uh, measurements. Emerson offers a variety of solutions uh, to enable conformance with API standard 682. However, we'll also be talking about how you can go beyond uh, the what is recommended in the standard and uh, for additional benefits. So what are the uh, the plans that we're uh, focusing on here, 52 and then uh, the three parts of 53 A, B, and C? Uh, plan, uh, all of these plans are specific to dual seal pumps. Uh, the main difference between 52 and 53 is that 52 is an unpressurized system and 53 is pressurized. So if we look at the uh, uh, artist renditions on the uh, the bottom of the slide here, uh, it's really representative at first glance of either 52 or 53A. Very, very similar, but uh, different. Very similar looking, but different in operation, basically in the uh, uh, the, the pressure that they operate at. The Plan 52 is normally uh, unpressurized, so if, seal, uh, if the process fluid leaks through the inboard seal, we would see either an accumulation of level in the reservoir if the process fluid was still liquid at uh, ambient pressure, atmospheric pressure, uh, or if it was pumping a, a fluid that would vaporize or partially vaporize at atmospheric pressure, the pressure in the, in the reservoir will build as it vents through the orifice plate, the restriction orifice, and we would see a pressure rise. So either a high level alarm or a high pressure for plan 52 would in, be indicative of an inboard seal leak. On plan 53, the um, reservoir is above the pressure of the seal chamber inside the pump, so any uh, leakage would go from the reservoir into the pump, and that would be sensed by the low level alarm. So dual mechanical seals were developed to uh, reduce the risk of process fluid loss. With a single mechanical seal, if the one seal fails, you have a release of process fluid. And in refining and petrochemical plants, the process fluid is always either flammable, toxic, or sometimes both. So in a plant 52 that's unpressurized, the fluid is referred to as a uh, buffer fluid. And in plant 53, where it's pressurized, uh, it is referred to as a barrier fluid, so it's a slight nuance. But the function is still the same, to provide lubrication and cooling to the mechanical seal faces. Because loss of this flush fluid will lead to uh, rapid uh, seal damage, seal failure. Now, there, there are other uh, causes of seal failure as well, so we will get into those. So the consequence of a, of a failed seal is that the process can leak into the atmosphere or the reservoir, and as I mentioned, most uh, inside a refinery or petrochemical plant, there is a risk of fire or, or you know, serious explosions associated with the pump seal leak. With respect to uh, sensors, Emerson offers a, a wide range of transmitters. Uh, also available in wireless to provide uh, these pump measurements, whether it is on the seal systems or some of the other measurements around the, uh, the pump. And even though it, when the plant was built, it may be a relatively inexpensive pump, but the we shouldn't let that fool us into thinking that it is not uh, consequential to the process, not not uh, necessary. So even if even the failure of a fairly inexpensive pump can uh, result in uh, large uh, losses. So the, uh, the benefits of providing these measurements is primarily to increase the process availability, to keep running, reduce the uh, unplanned incidents. And also, if uh, it is detected that a pump is uh, needing maintenance, it, it can be taken out of service in a much more cool, calm, and collected manner than a pump that where the seal has already failed. So operations can take the pump out of service 
and maintenance can be performed on the pump and generally at lower cost because uh, one can plan for the uh, parts and the maintenance and the damage may not be as severe as if it had been run to failure. Another advantage of uh, sensors in the field around the pump is that it requires fewer operator rounds to, uh, to take manual data. The operators can still uh, use their eyes and ears to, uh, and sense of smell to detect uh, leakage, but uh, they wouldn't be burdened with the acquisition of this uh, data. So why Emerson Wireless? It provides uh, the lower, lowest total cost of ownership of the available uh, wireless technologies. Uh, Emerson uses Wireless Heart as the protocol. It's a self-organizing mesh network. Um, to add additional instrumentation in the field, there's often very little spare wiring. And so the uh, using a transmitter, uh, a wireless transmitter, we can uh, is easier to uh, install and very uh, much more cost effective than pulling wires, especially in an operating unit. So API standard 682 provides a uh, number of options for plants to uh, consider regarding sealing systems. And there are what we could call it gray areas, uh, which are intentionally left open for interpretation, but it, it basically is to facilitate the adoption of emerging technologies. The standard was, wasn't, was written to uh, not lock uh, users into uh, a certain way of doing things. The, the importance is a, it's a functional requirement of detecting a level or a pressure, but how you do it is left open to the users. And this also allows uh, users to overlay their own special requirements on top of the standards that they may choose to uh, govern equipment in their plant. So even though the standard uh, provides a, um, a standard way of doing things, in the real world uh, there are often uh, uh, deviations or additions to the standard. And regardless, uh, we'll, we'll help with recommendations for how to instrument a pump according to the standard and, and your needs for uh, each application. So here's a table that uh, summarizes uh, the solutions uh, by the uh, API auxiliary seal flush piping plan. Uh, the top row are level measurements, the middle, the second row is pressure, and then the temperature uh, measurements. Um, it should be noted for level, uh, there is, that's not a typo, there is no 53B uh, level instrument. It is a liquid full system with the pressure being provided by a, a bladder accumulator uh, to maintain the uh, flush fluid above the uh, seal chamber pressure. And the uh, pressure uh, instruments uh, is a pressure transmitter across the board and the temperature transmitter uh, uh, for various options as well. Uh, the temperature transmitter was added to 53B uh, to provide a uh, dynamic alarm set point for the low pressure alarm of that bladder accumulator. Uh, there's a very good discussion on, on that uh, in the standard. I would refer you to the, uh, the annex where that would be discussed. However, we see the changes here are, are uh, the, oper the opportunities uh, for um, options are in the, the technology for level measurement. And we'll uh, go through each of these in the next couple of slides. Okay, so the recommended option uh, is the guided wave radar level transmitter. This is a new technology, uh, rel relatively new compared to the, uh, the standard. And the um, artist rendition here on the, uh, the right shows the guided wave radar level transmitter inserted through the top of the reservoir where the, uh, the vent was located. And, and you can see uh, we have it shown here on the side. Um, so the guided wave radar level uh, transmitter is not uh, subject to um, changing specific gravity, for example, of the process fluid. And another advantage is that whereas the uh, standard recommended the level uh, measurement range to be this uh, on that gauge glass, maybe uh, one foot on the side of the vessel, the guided wave radar level transmitter can be uh, inserted all the way down the length of the reservoir, even through the, uh, the center of the cooling coils. And uh, we would recommend a coaxial probe for the guided wave radar level transmitter because of the, uh, the internal uh, parts there. 
So uh, it, it does uh, provide uh, some advantages. Now let's let's look at um, the option with the hydrostatic level transmitter, which is uh, specified uh, in the standard, but with the caveat that uh, the user can specify other technologies for level. Um, the uh, what is depicted here in this artist's rendition, uh, the hydrostatic level transmitter on the side of the vessel. The um, we would not recommend a user use the wet reference leg. Um, there is a chance if the uh, there is some fluid loss in that wetted reference leg that it would cause an error to exceed uh, the actual low level set point of the transmitter. So when using hydrostatic level transmitters, we would recommend a uh, remote seal arrangement to eliminate any maintenance and uh, um, issues uh, from using a wetted re reference leg. Now a third option was uh, really reflects the, the very beginnings of the, what was recommended in the API uh, standard 682, showing uh, vibrating uh, fork level switches. Actually, I should say that the standard just called them level switches. And in the uh, decades ago, these level switches were uh, mechanical float type switches, which were more prone to uh, not working when they should. And uh, what Emerson is offering today are vibrating fork level switches, so no uh, no moving parts in the essence that they're rubbing uh, against each other. This is uh, it's vibrating moving, but it's still a uh, there's no uh, uh, sliding pieces that can get hung up with debris or rust or something like that. So the vibrating fork level switch is a, a much more reliable method of uh, triggering the alarm than the, the float type switches of the past. These are um, uh, fairly less, I, it's not, they're more cost effective uh, than uh, transmitters, but you're unable to give you that view of where the level is between the two switch points. So um, here's a, a, a picture that shows a, a pump motor on the right and then the pump, and above that is the sealed flush fluid reservoir that we had been uh, talking about. Um, but there are other measurements uh, that can bring value in, uh, to your uh, operations by uh, giving you better view to the condition of your assets. Um, we, these instrumentation uh, could be detecting uh, cavitating, uh, cavitation happening in the pump by either looking at uh, uh, the pressure or uh, the wireless vibration monitor, which is shown uh, just above the pump, which has two probes shown, one attached to the, the motor and one attached to the pump. Um, this, uh, uh, regardless of the cause of vibration, it's generally bad for a pump, whether this vibration is caused uh, to uh, mis misalignment during installation or, or after, uh, after maintenance. Uh, it could be a worn coupling, it could be bad bearings, it could be a cracked foundation, or uh, the grout uh, that holds the, uh, the frame is, uh, is cracked and, and you're picking up vibrations. So, you know, it's been, uh, it's been said, uh, or I've heard it said, that mechanical seals will last forever until they fail, which means uh, if you take care of them, they'll give you a long life, but if you're abusing them with such as high vibration or certainly loss of seal flush would, would do it. But um, a vibration can be a, a, a large cause of, uh, regardless of the cause of the vibration, vibration can be a, a cause of seal failure. So what else can go wrong with the pumps? Uh, not all pumps have uh, pump suction strainers, but those that do, um, you can be uh, uh, change the locally reading gauge that would tell you uh, when the strainer needs uh, plugging. You can replace that with a, a wireless differential pressure transmitter and bring that information in. Uh, not necessarily straight to the operator, but you could direct it to uh, the maintenance shop, for example. That's uh, up to the uh, user to uh, decide. Um, bearing temperatures, whether or motor winding uh, temperatures, can be sensed and brought in as a, a, a leading indicator of uh, problems. There are hydrocarbon leak detectors that you could mount uh, below the pump seal, and when the uh, uh, when it became wet with hydrocarbons, it will give you uh, an alert. alert. Um, we mentioned the seal fluid level, and uh, again, uh, any uh, installation misalignment, de defects, problems with the, the physical mounting of the pump, we can detect with uh, the vibration transmitter. So you can see Emerson provides a fairly comprehensive monitoring solutions uh, for pump health monitoring. So how do we get this information uh, into, uh, into the operations or maintenance where somebody can see it? Uh, this is a pretty simple graphic here, but it shows uh, the instruments speak directly to the uh, smart wireless gateway. 
and the gateway can be uh, interfaced to your existing uh, VCS or data historian as you see fit, and you can develop your own uh, applications to uh, manage that data. Or uh, we invite you to uh, consider our uh, the pre-engineered uh, Emerson uh, Essential Asset Monitoring uh, software. Uh, we have a, there's a family of these uh, essential asset monitoring software packages for pumps, uh, compressors, uh, heat exchangers, air cooled heat exchangers, cooling water towers, etc. So the uh, uh, here's a uh, overview uh, screen grab of the pump health monitor. Um, but what we do is take uh, a lot of the, the uh, measurements around the pump, the vibrations, uh, however, uh, and the user can, can determine how heavily instrumented you want the pump, depends on your service, but we'll take the uh, information you have and, and condense that into a, a single uh, pump health status value. So at a glance, you can uh, see how the pump is uh, operating or uh, when it is in need of uh, further uh, a closer look, just uh, alerting the maintenance staff to come out here and take a closer look at this pump and, and determine if maintenance is required. So for uh, more information uh, on our pump health monitoring solutions, please visit our website at emersonprocess.com slash pumps. Uh, send us an email, uh, the, the address on the screen, I don't need to repeat that, or give us a call, the, the phone number is listed. And also, uh, you may be interested in downloading these uh, two white papers, uh, one uh, very much what we've talked about uh, briefly in this uh, webinar, uh, what uh, changed with the, the latest edition of uh, API Standard 682, and we have a more uh, a, a, um, general uh, pump health monitoring solutions white paper that, that looks at uh, the other measurements outside of the uh, seal flush systems. So with that, I would uh, thank you for your attention. and. Uh, and uh, thanks for attending.